A few weeks ago, I hosted a live stream which I designed a group of intelligent aliens that originally evolved in a radioactive planet. For whatever reason, a truly absurd amount of plutonium had been distilled throughout the planet's soil, which would obviously lead to the native life evolving a tolerance to the aforementioned plutonium. Then, with the help of my Discord server, I began world building. So let's get into it. Near the center of the Milky Way galaxy was a planet called Key. While its orbit was around a dimly lit brown dwarf, it was still a fairly warm planet thanks to its high degree of radioactive waste. Over time, life eventually evolved in the form of radiotrophic organisms. Similar to Earth plants absorbing energy through sunlight, these life forms evolved to process and utilize the radiation around them. Since this radioactive energy was far more potent than the sunlight found on Earth, these quote-unquote plants could employ a more active lifestyle. In time, there were walking plants, whose roots had evolved into legs that could take them to more plentiful environments. From there, many creatures evolved to substitute their diets by eating the other life forms, using a newly evolved digestive tract that spanned through their legs, adapted from their original root system. Ultimately, they weren't really animals, and they weren't really plants, but they were also kind of both. But for the sake of this video, I'll be referring to life forms that mostly absorb radiation as plant life, and life forms that mostly eat other life forms as animals. An example of the latter is the yolk, a creature whose specialized anatomy eventually led to the evolution of intelligence. While other creatures possess two distinct brains, one for movement and another for sensory organs, the yolk's brains had melded together, allowing for more unified thought. They also possessed a set of dexterous trunks used to manipulate the surroundings and two flightless wings that passively absorb radiation. However, the vast majority of their energy still came from eating actual food. The earliest records of yolk society consisted of nomadic tribes of hunter-gatherers, but it wasn't long before they discovered agriculture. While there are many life forms analogous to the crops and livestock of early human cultures, a much more unique example of yolk domestication can be found in the duck sprouts. Using the silicone found in most of the planet's native life, the duck sprouts evolved hardy crystalline shells to protect themselves against predators, and over time, the yolks began shaping these sprouts as they grew, producing statues, furniture, and eventually full-blown houses. These living structures would often take decades to produce, but the end result were these beautiful, glistening fortresses that brought great pride to the architects that crafted them. There were, however, countless other forms of art in their early societies, such as the written word. Yokan languages were derived mostly from a mix of audible vocalizations and scent-based pheromones secreted from the tips of their tails. And eventually, the yokes learned to record information by using these pheromonal fluids as ink. But since most information was conveyed through the scent of the page, any given symbol was used only for added context, and for this reason, their written languages remained relatively simplistic for most of their history, consisting of simple pictographs and having very few grammatical rules. But regardless, as the years went by, the yokes grew more advanced, until eventually something resembling a steam engine was invented, but due to the unique resources found in their planet, this original engine was actually a nuclear reactor. This invention quickly allowed access to a truly staggering surplus of attainable energy, and in the span of a couple generations, once small medieval-looking shires were completely transformed into flourishing electric cities. Not long after that, they found some early success in space colonization. Since their planet had a fairly weak gravitational pull, alongside the yolks being completely unaffected by cosmic radiation, all they needed was an airtight vessel with a powerful engine and they were free to conquer the stars. And so they did, sending a few dozen generation ships to the far off edges of the distant galaxy. The most popular destination, however, was the planet Tar. Tar was the only other planet in their star system. It was sort of like Key's moon, but they were nearly the same size, so really they orbited each other. Regardless, Tar was the first planet to be fully terraformed by Yokan society, and for many generations, there was peace. But for one reason or another, tensions grew between the two planets, and they were eventually flung into a full-on nuclear war. Since the Yokes didn't really have to worry about radioactive fallout or nuclear winners, they had no issue with indiscriminately flinging nuclear warheads at one another for years on end. Surprisingly, this resulted in relatively few actual fatalities, since the citizens were usually given enough time to evacuate. It did, however, destroy the vast majority of great architectural feats dotted across the land. More so, it permanently damaged the yoke's interest in proper architecture. As mentioned before, these buildings took decades to produce, so what was the point if they'll just be wiped off the map in a couple of years? In the end, these great glass cathedrals were replaced by cheap, disposable, yurt-like buildings. These structures would be built in mass and lived in for a few years, until an oncoming nuke would inevitably force their inhabitants to leave them behind. Needless to say, this weary nomadic lifestyle was unbearable, and in just a few generations, the surfaces of both planets were almost entirely uninhabited. While some retreated to underground bunkers, the vast majority shot for the stars, kicking off a second wave of space colonization. Unfortunately, years of a rugged, war-torn lifestyle had led to a permanent shift in their culture. Generally speaking, they now viewed the ships, buildings, and even planets they lived on as completely disposable. 
Instead of terraforming distant worlds, they would simply set up shop for a few hundred years, take all the resources they could, and leave. The resources in question went toward the creation of some truly astronomical megastructures. From space elevators to Dyson spheres to giant planet-sized arc ships, the Yokes were quickly known as the proud engineers behind the largest artificial structures in the known universe, eventually using swarms of automated machines to collect the resources for them. Not because the other species couldn't produce such feats, but because the heavy cost of destroying thousands of asteroid belts, planets, and entire star systems was far too great for most to reconcile. For millennia, this group of yokes, who I'll be calling the Engineers, expanded across the galaxy, destroying everything in their path with little thought of the extraterrestrial life that may get caught in their wake. That was until they reached the territory of a second star-spanning civilization. The descendants of the yokes' first wave of space colonization had made quite the name for themselves, terraforming countless planets, adapting to those planets through a mix of natural selection and rudimentary gene modifications, and forming diplomatic ties with other spacefaring aliens. And when they learned of the destruction caused by their distant relatives, they assembled their armies with those of their extraterrestrial allies. That might include humanity, or maybe the Harlows from the last video, I don't really know. Either way, with their powers combined, they are able to stop the engineers in their ever-expanding destruction of the universe. But to this day, the already-built megastructures are held up as some of the greatest feats of engineering in the universe. For obvious reasons. That's all I have for right now, but I would like to once again thank my Discord server for their help and mention some of their ideas that didn't quite make it into the video. They had a pretty cool creation myth about a giant evil space bird alongside another cool idea regarding elder yokes. Basically, they said as a yoke grew older, they should become a massive, immobile, tree-like life form, which is really cool, and we may revisit that idea in the future, but I couldn't quite slot it in place, so here it is at the end. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to watch the previous video and consider subscribing or joining my Discord server so you'll know when the next one comes out. Links are in the description. And until next time, don't die. See you later.